This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, joined as always by Naomi Manea. It may be almost winter, although you can't tell in Southern California, but we're gonna get wet. All of our guests today call the Speaker Aquatic Center home during their athletic pursuits. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at this week's upcoming events. UCLA water polo is synonymous with national excellence, and this year is no exception. The Bruins are 15 and 3, 4 and 1 in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, with postseason play just around the corner, only four games left in the regular schedule. We are pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Bruins in his second season, Adam Wright, and redshirt junior attacker Colin Hennessy. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Thanks, thanks guys for having us. Uh, coach, we talked about uh, the standard of excellence at UCLA. As a rookie coach last year, you got to the championship match. That had to be a thrill. Yeah, it was a good, good way to start off. You know, it was a hard one to swallow there at the end and lose by one to SC, of course. But, you know, as long as we can build off that and then the, the years to come, it'll be a great stepping stone. We mentioned 15-3, uh, and three, but two of those losses by one goal to SC. H how do you get over the hurdle? Well, you know, actually every time since I've been here, we've lost by a goal to SC, and it's, you know, it's been a challenge. You know, last year, I, I, I strongly believe they were the best team in the country. Um, this year, you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot early on in the game. Um, we fought our way back in to give it up again at the end. Um, but, you know, we'll see this weekend. We go over to SC on Saturday, and uh, we're ready, gonna be, excuse me, we're going to be ready for the challenge. Colin, you had a great match against SC. You had three goals last time. What does it feel like facing the Trojans? Um, it's always a huge rivalry game. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of implications, not just for, you know, the cross, crosstown rivalry, but, you know, the national championship. Obviously, we played them last year. I mean, we played them five times last year, and this will be our third go-around this year. And, I mean, it's always great to, to have, you know, one of your best games against SC. But really, it, I mean, it was a total team effort. I mean, we came up short. We weren't pleased with it, and we're just looking to build off that and, and hopefully uh, get a chance to, um, to beat them at home this weekend. Colin, you had the privilege of being at the championship game last year and playing in that game. How does that experience carry on to this season for you and your team? How does it help? It was, I mean, being, on, being in that game and having that experience was, I mean, something that I'd always dreamed of. And so it was nice to get 
that out of the way, I mean, it was definitely a little nerve-wracking. So, I mean, we're looking to get back there, obviously. I mean, our goal every year is to win a national championship. And, I mean, we came up short last year. It was a good effort, but like you said, I mean, as long as, as long as we build off that, then it's good. But if we can't get back there this year, I mean, last year's opportunity was good, but, but not great. So, you know, it gives us, there's a lot of, lot of returners and a lot of guys who played in that game last year. So it gives us confidence to know, I mean, we're in a similar position just to get back to that game this year. You know, we have to do well at the end of this season and do well in the conference tournament and hopefully get an opportunity to go back there. But it um, gives us the confidence and, you know, just the experience of playing in such a big game. Well, you're a Northern California guy from Fairfax up in Marin County. The MPSF is at Stanford this year. The national championships are at Cal. So that'd be fun going home playing in front of family and Yeah, friends. no, it's, it's always nice. Um, I mean, we get to go up. We don't get to go up there too often. I mean, usually we, we've been up there. We went up twice. We went for the, up for the NorCal tournament and then to play Cal at home this year. So, um, yeah, it's always nice to go home. I mean, my folks always make it down here. I mean, they come to pretty much all of our games. So that, that's always nice. But it's, it's good to have have you know the rest of the family and my siblings and grandparents and stuff it's always fun so hopefully I get to go home and, and play in front of them. Coach you had a spectacular career as a player including a couple of Olympic games uh, as a coach now what, what did you learn in your first season as head coach last year that you've carried into this year? You know the main thing is is you know college sports it's more than just athletics you know first it's you know academics and you know balancing time and you know, these kids have a lot on their plate, um, and I think it's very important that y you keep a kind of an equal balance there. And you know, this is a time, this is a four or five year experience of their life that's maybe the most important growing period. Um, that's the most important thing I learned. You know, from a sports side, you know, the fight every day against against the guys resisting, you know, resisting what we're trying to do tactically, or you know, resisting some work because they might be tired. Um, and you got to you got to keep that up throughout the year. You got to stay on them. And you know, if you, if you let your guard down one day, it could come back to you know to haunt you. So you know, those were the main things. But you know, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I really you know have to sit back sometimes and realize that you know these these are kids that are growing up. You know, they're developing into adults. Um, they're trying to get a you know an education. And you know, that's the that's the biggest thing I think from last year that I learned. You, you learned your craft under the tutelage of Adam Krikorian, great coach, gone on to coach at the national level and serving as an assistant now at UCLA. What's it like having him on your staff? Well, you know, <laughs> it makes my life a lot easier. And, you know, and a lot of these guys played for him for a couple years. Um, you know, if there's questions, we always discuss. You know, he's there to challenge me. You know, I'm there to challenge him. We have, you know, we have good discussion every day. You know, he's a huge, he has a huge part, you know, in what we've done and hopefully, you know, where we're going to go this year. Um, I couldn't ask for a better assistant. Coach, you have five seniors on the team this year, and a lot of your team are the younger ones. Do you see long-term potential as far as NCAA contenders for this team? You know, for this year, you know, of course that will be our goal. But, you know, we talk about all the time, you know, what can we control? And we can control the day. You know, today's Wednesday, and we're going to control how we practice today. You know, going in, we know this week we have USC. So we control the day, you know, how we're going to bring, what our effort's going to be, what our mindset's going to be then go tomorrow and then Friday and then get ready to go on Saturday. Um, you know, I think if we follow the simple rules that we've established as a group, you know, and they, these guys have set standards, um, I think we'll be in a position every game. You know, there's no guarantees you're going to win. It's not easy to win. It takes a little bit of luck. Um, but, you know, if, if we progress as a team each and every day, you know, we'll have a chance down the road. Colin, when did you realize that you were better than the other kids in the pool, that you were actually going to be able to compete at a high level? In water polo, it took me a little, a little while to realize that. I'd always been, I'd always excelled in swimming and, and trained mostly. I mean, I didn't train really full-time water polo. I mean, I came from a community where the water polo isn't as strong as Orange County. Or How'd you start playing? Uh, I mean, I started playing, I still started playing young. I probably started playing at like eight, but my <clears throat> older brother had played, my dad played a little bit. Um, but no, it took me a little while. I mean, <clears throat> I think probably sophomore year of high school, I really realized that that I wanted to do this and that I could have a chance of playing at a program like UCLA. And I went and watched, must have been, I think, my sophomore year of high school, watched us win the uh, 2004 National Championship at Stanford. And from then on, I just, you know, I wanted to be a Bruin. And now that you are a Bruin, is it everything you hoped it would be? Absolutely. I mean, I've had, I mean, I, I keep, keep telling myself, you know, it's, it's crazy that I only have, you know, a year left of college and I even get an extra quarter. So. Um, yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I've had I've had such an awesome time, and, and just being here and being an athlete here, and 
being able to be part of this athletic program and this aquatics program. I mean, it's so storied and it's just a really honor to be a part of and, and I love every bit of it. Coach Wright talked a lot about the balance between academics, athletics, being in an environment where it's a very limited time that you're here. Um, how conscious are you of trying to balance the academic and athletic life? It's very difficult. I mean, he always tells us that, you know, I mean, it's water polo and it's school, and that really is, especially during season. I mean, we don't have much time for any social life, which uh, is something we're all willing to sacrifice, you know, to, to raise a banner and speaker. And, um, but no, it really just takes it takes a lot of balancing. It takes a lot of a lot of sacrifice and and just time management. And you know, it, it, it pays off. But I mean, it's a lot of hard work. Speaking of not really having a social life, what's a typical UCLA water polo player's day like? Uh, I mean, we usually have weights in the morning. I mean, depending on the day, but we'll have weights in the morning, and then we'll go up to the pool for swim or loose now, and then off to class, and then back in the afternoon for practice, and then go home, maybe get a little studying in, and try to get to bed early and get some rest. <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's really what it is. And then we have games on the weekend and, I mean, whatnot. So it's during season, it's very demanding. Coach, we talked about the Speaker Aquatic Center. You know, UCLA basically used to play their home matches in a recreational pool. Tell us what it's been like moving into a world-class facility. <laughs> I can't, you know, we're so thankful for that pool. Um, you know, when I played here, we were at Sunset, which was a recreational pool. The, the actual dimensions of that pool really aren't regulation for water polo. Um, you have to be in and out by a certain time when you share a pool, you know, with, with the rest of the university. You know, so if you need to work on things for, you know, a couple extra minutes, you don't have that luxury. But now, you know, moving into speaker, we have 50 meters of water. Um, which is important because we have a big team and you know that gives everyone on the team the ability to get better every day you know if you don't have that space not everybody can be included um, but also you know it's so nice to have everything you need in one spot you don't have to go carry stuff down and you know we have everything at our you know right there for us to use every day the balls the goals the heavy balls the bands everything so it's been a nice luxury. These guys, you know, I, I don't know how, if they realize how, how good they have it. You've had some big crowds there. Tell us what it's like with the noise and the atmosphere and the barbecue smoke and all the good stuff <laughs> over a speaker. You know, I told these guys the first day, you know, it should be our goal to be, you know, a sport where everybody wants to come to. You're, you act like, you know, gentlemen outside the pool. You know, you're, you're always helping if you can, you know, and, and, you know, and people will be attracted to that. And, you know, these big games that we've had against Stanford, you know, last year we had SC, you know, you have sellout crowds, you have people on top of the parking structure, you have people up in the trees trying to get a look at the game. You know, it'd be great if we could have that all the time. Um, but that, that's our responsibility to, to perform at the end of the day. And, you know, and this year we had a good game against uh, Stanford. We came back from behind. Um, and it is loud. It's fun. You know, it's fun for the guys. They deserve it. They put the work in. They put the time in. And, you know, it's nice to have, you know, fellow students there to cheer them on. In a couple of moments, we're going to be meeting with some of the stars of the women's diving team. There's a platform at the end of your pool. Ever tempted to get up and jump off? Yeah, we did it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's high. You know, those girls, it's crazy the things they, you know, they do off there. You know, twist and starting in a handstand. And, you know, it takes uh, some guts to do that stuff. But I think pretty much everyone on our team has gone off at some point. And Colin, you grew up as a swimmer. Ever tempted to, to go off the board? Yeah, I mean, I mean I've mean, i gone up there and jumped off. But no, I mean, <laughs> diving is not my forte. I mean, I can swim and I can play water pool, but I've never been much of a diver. I mean, I enjoy going off there. But, yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking, too. And you got to make sure you land right. If you've got the 10-meter, you can, you can do a little damage. Quickly before we close, what, what's going to be the key for the Bruins advancing this year in the tournament? You know, the key is going to be, you know, our defense and, you know, how, you know, limiting teams the goals. You know, if we could keep teams to six goals or less, we're going to have a chance in every game. And we've got to get better in our front court defense and our five on six defense. And if we do that, then, you know, every game we're going to have a chance. If you haven't been out to the Speaker Aquatic Center to see UCLA water polo, you owe it to yourself to do it. It's a great experience. And Adam Wright, Colin Hennessy, thank you for joining us. Thank Best you. of luck as the season winds on. Thanks, Thanks for having us. And we'll be right back with more Bruin Talk after this public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. Hey. 
UCLA. Champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at this week's Athlete of the Week. This week we honor Ben Hole of the men's water polo team as our student athlete of the week. In their recent hostings of UC San Diego, Pomona Pitzer, and Long Beach State, the team managed to extend its winning streak to seven consecutive games. In the past four games, Ben has scored a minimum of three goals each. Ben leads the Bruins in multiple goal efforts for the season with 12 and continues to score on power plays. Ben's scoring record currently equals that of Coach Adam Wright. The wins also bring the team to an overall record of 15-3 and, and set a strong momentum as the team prepares to step into tournament play this month in Stanford. Congratulations, Ben, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. As we continue our aquatics theme on this episode of UCLA Bruin Talk, we are going to turn our attention to the diving board and platform. It's a very specialized art, and we've got two of the best with us. We've got Michelle Vale and Laura Wynn of the women's diving team. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. Hi, thank you. Laura, you're a senior. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that your sport is a winter sport, that your postseason is the end of January, start of February. Getting ready, getting excited? We're getting really excited. We actually already had uh, two meets, and we have some. We have an invitational at USC this weekend, so we have some meets in the fall. But uh, the real important stuff starts in the winter, and so far, so good. So we're really excited. Michelle, you're a sophomore. Uh, you have made a splash in your brief time at UCLA, but hopefully a little one. Um, we just talked a minute ago to the water polo guys, asked mm -hmm. them if they've ever jumped off the platform. <laughs> How long did it take? Well, first of all, that probably must not have been something you'd want to see. But do you ever get to see them goofing around? <laughs> sometimes. Um, sometimes they jump off for fun. Um, was it? I think last year, actually, the football team jumped off of it um, before <laughs> their bowl game, and yeah. it was pretty funny. They got some good smacks. A little scary. Yeah, it was a little sketchy. Entertaining. <laughs> Michelle, when did you learn that you had a gift for, for diving? Um, I didn't start diving until like freshman year of high school because I did gymnastics. Um, but junior and senior year of high school, it started getting better and it's just continued to get better since. So a lot of divers are previous gymnasts. Mm -hmm. You were a previous gymnast and you too. Now, Laura, yeah. when did you decide to switch over and how did that decision come about? When I quit gymnastics, I tried a few things. Um, and I had a friend who quit gymnastics and started diving and recommended that I try it. And I did and it just kind of stuck. So I started in high school and kept going. The TV images of divers are the divers standing there just before the moment of launch alone with his or her thoughts. What, what's going through your mind when you're up there just before you go? Too much. <laughs> um, a lot. Uh, diving is a very mental sport, and the whole challenge of it is, you know, you don't really have an opponent. You're kind of diving with yourself. And so you, um, you know, you try to keep your emotions under control, and you try to do all of your thinking before your heels, you know, go onto the edge of the board. Once you're there, you just kind of, you're in the moment and just see what happens. Michelle, what is the practice routine like for a diver as you get ready for a meet? Um, usually like the week before, we'll do um, our list and sometimes we'll do like one of each for score and our coach will score us and we'll compete with each other. Um, and then as the meet comes closer, sometimes we'll do like less dives so that by the time we get there, we're not tired. And then on the day of the meet, we'll do a warm up, we'll do probably go through one or two of each and then see how it goes. So there's a lot of flipping and twisting in the sport of mm -hmm. diving. Mm -hmm. How do you guys learn those skills before you take them out to the diving board? Uh, we do a lot of dry land, so a lot of imitated actions just on just going through the motions on the ground. Uh, we have trampoline, we go in the belt, we get strapped into a belt and our coach can pull us so we can try things uh, without crashing down. Um, we also have a diving board that uh, we jump onto mats, we don't go into the water. So just lots of different things, lots of different drills we can use. Um, in terms of in the water, we have uh, this thing called bubbles. Um, I think like ski aerialists use them too, but uh, basically it's just air that comes up out of the water and it breaks the surface tension. So if we do kind of miss and kind of smack, it ends up okay and we can 
use those until we figure it out. <laughs> we were talking with uh, the water polo about the Speaker Aquatic Center. What a wonderful facility it is. Mm -hmm. Laura, you remember when you had to go to the Pasadena Aquatic Center and, yeah. and to practice 30 miles. Yeah. What a difference. Huge difference. It's we what the amount of work we're able to do now um, is a lot so much more and in terms of just scheduling your classes and your just weekly schedule it's much better and much easier. Michelle is there an off season? Mm, not really. <laughs> uh, spring is I guess the biggest off season. What kind of things do you work on between years to kind of improve your game? In the spring? Anytime. Um, I guess um, we, at the beginning of the year, we start doing like heavier weights and uh, drills and like easy stuff, like jumps and lineups. And then um, uh, as the year goes on, we progress and do more dives and get our list better. And then we compete. And then like after our season, we usually get like really, really heavy weights and get strong and go back to drills. That's how we get better. So you did mention that diving is a mental sport and it it's got to be scary. I was, used to be a gymnast. That's nothing compared to jumping off those platforms. How do you guys get yourselves to do it? You can't be scared. You just got to gotta go for it and you have to love it. Um, the feeling you get when you try something new and it, it's successful is unbelievable. And all the fear kind of goes away once you, once you can do that. Makes what it fun. For you? Um, kind of the same thing. I mean, you get nervous up there, but you just have to count to three and go and just hope that it works and then it's like a great feeling once you do a dive and it worked out good. Laura, what are your favorite events? Uh, 10 meter is my favorite event. Thrill um, seeker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just a lot of fun. Um, I've had more success up there also, but it's just, I kind of just what I was talking about earlier, the feeling you get when you rip a dive, you know, you go in, no splash, you just know, and it's, it's amazing. Where are you at in your progress in this, your senior year? Uh, you know, I'm sure you're working on things to try to hone your game to the point where the postseason comes, you're right there. What, what kind of things are you working on now? Um, my, you know, my main goal is to qualify for the NC2A championships. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm working towards each year. And my, my hope is to do that in the 10 meter event. Let's yeah, see. well, you want to go to the winter paradise of Iowa City, Iowa. <laughs> compete. What's yep. it like di uh, diving indoors as opposed to being outside? 10 meters seems a little higher because you got the ceiling kind of right there, but uh, you get used to it. I prefer to dive outside. Um, I mean, obviously, that's just what we're comfortable with. But, you know, going indoors, you just, it takes a day to kind of adjust your, your spots and your, you know, your surroundings, but it's not, it's pretty much the same. Michelle, those of us that can't do diving, and that's most of us, uh, always see that there's uh, water being sprayed onto the surface of the pool. How important is that to, uh, to see exactly where the surface is? Even though you've done the dive from the same yeah. distance, how important is that? Um, it's really important. It actually gives you like the depth perception so you know when to come out. If there, if there was no like water, it's just kind of like blue and you don't really know how far you are away from the water. So it's very, very helpful. Uh, there's a point when you're on your way down where you have to make an adjustment so that you, you hit it just right. Uh, yeah, usually you don't try to make adjustments. Usually you hope that the beginning of the dive is good so the end of it also is. So we try not to do that. You did mention that you have NC2A goals individually. Mm -hmm. What about as a team? Where do you guys see yourselves this season? You know, I think this weekend uh, we have an invitational at USC, and I think that's going to be a good indication of kind of where we are within the Pac-10. Um, so, you know, we're not sure. I think we have a lot of talent that we can tap into and I you know I hope that we can so but I think after this weekend we'll have a better I idea of what we can accomplish as a team. And many people wouldn't expect to see injuries from the sport of diving but I do know that it can definitely affect your wrists. How do you guys deal with all that pressure going into that? Tape. Uh, we tape our wrists. <laughs> you know just making sure that you know, we, we do need to be strong. Um, people are always surprised that we are in the weight room lifting weights, but for the amount of impact that, um, you know, if you've ever done a belly flop, it hurts. <laughs> and, you know, that's our, that's our wrist every day. So, yeah, just tape and make sure that we take care of ourselves. Are there any other injuries that we can, that are considered normal from the sport of diving? Back injuries. Back injuries. Um, shin, shin split. Shin split, I mean. Really, from, well, from launching? 
Yeah. Oh, interesting. From, yeah, our, our hurdle, our approach to the end of the board, uh, usually it's in just one leg because that's the main leg that we, we go off of. So. What kind of land exercises do you do to strengthen your legs? We run. We run. Um, just doing um, a lot of jumps helps also. And Before you came in, Naomi and I were chatting, and she's a gymnast, mm -hmm. and, and I guess did some diving, and she said it's, it, it was hard for her to get used to landing on your head. You don't do that as a gymnast very <laughs> successfully. <laughs> How about you guys with the gymnastics background? It was weird at first. I didn't like it, learning to do just from like one somersault to one and a half. But, you know, just with anything, you just learn the skills, and over time you get used to it, and got to kind of get rid of your bad habits from gymnastics and learn, you know, how to flip like a diver in a whole new way, but... Michelle, how do you know this is for you? Um, I knew it was for me when I started diving, like, in high school, and I just started getting a lot better, a lot faster. Like, in gymnastics, it kind of hit, like, a plateau, and it couldn't really get any better. Um, so it just was really exciting to know that I could keep getting better and go to college for diving. You both have very hard majors. Laura, you're applied mathematics and you have biz econ. How do you guys balance being students here at UCLA and athletes? Time management, <laughs> um, pretty much. You know, you're definitely, there's been times where you kind of lose, lose that balance, but if you just, you know, make sure that each day you wake up and you have, you know, a goal and a purpose and what do you want to accomplish that day, you can get it done. And as with all sports at UCLA, you can follow the exploits of the swim and dive team on UCLABruins.com. That's going to do it. Our time has flown by. We hope you enjoyed it. For Naomi Manea, I'm Dave Marcus. We'll see you next time. Until then, so long.